You're still watching Half a Corner Couch. This is part two of our producer's table conversation where it's, it's going down. We are learning so much about what it means to be a producer, the, the daily life of a producer, and also the struggles, but also the wins of producing amazing television, amazing content, because it's not just television. It's content that's widely shared. Now, I want to... I, wanna, I, I had the pleasure of being on set... Um, Many, when was Trackers? Trackers SA, mm -hmm. the Eminem show. About I, three, three years ago. Three, yeah, three yeah. or four years ago. Yeah. I had the pleasure of being on set. Now, this is where I'm putting it to you guys, and we can argue on this. <laughs> when I got on set, I'd been on many South African sets from time to time, but I got the pleasure of getting more an internationally run set. Everybody else outside, the, everybody else was South African outside the, the director, the DOP, and I think the producer because I think it was a collaborative project with Cinemax, HBO, yeah. uh, Multi-Choice, et cetera, and, and those guys. So I got to be on set for like four days. We're sitting there building content for, to market the show. What I got to understand was that there is a level of, there's a level of respect that black staff within the creative industry give the white or external guys that they don't give to the black guys when it comes to we need to do certain things. And I figured this because I'd been on multiple sets, but on this set, completely full black crew, everybody's there. And I said, because it was these were Scandinavian guys. One was Scandinavian, one was American, one was and I figured, I said, I've never seen this type of interaction, attention to detail, uh, from the rest of the South African crew versus it being the heads being, the producers and stuff being international, because the standard was international, there was a different expectation. Do you find that yourselves being at the top, right, relative to that, the hierarchy, being at the top of the creative pile um, and show running and producing, do you feel that the relationship that you have with people within the industry who work with and for you, because that must be clear, we mustn't be politically correct. People, some people work with you, some people work for you, right? How are you finding this chasm, because there is a black on black nyats, or we nyata each other as blacks. Mm. And you, you've worked, you're 20 years in, you're 12 years in, you're 15 years in, in the industry, and you've earned your stripes, and people don't want to professionalize to a rate that is required for the production that you are on the line for, as you've said. What's going on on set? Let's talk about what actually goes on on set currently, and how we hear diva moments, uh, etc. This actor, that actress, the extras are now on strike, etc. But in that context, what is the environment right now on South African sets? I mean, I can't speak for any other set, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do engage with, with, with other, you know, productions, but I think I can only speak truly for my, for my own sets, is that I cultivate a culture um, that is very certain. Um, of what our vision is, yeah. right? Um, so, and it's a culture of, 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 of respect, um, that we use the best. Yeah. And if you're on set, you're considered the best. Yeah. I don't know what you do on another set yeah. and how you conduct yourself on another set, but on my set yeah. and how we do things mm. at Dope Zulu Boy Productions yeah. is, you know, of a certain standard. Yeah. Um, so I generally find, you know, the collaborators that we work with on Dope Zulu Boy production yeah. to kind of respect that kind of culture work and ethic. sentiment and ethic. Um, I, I don't know why that is, but I think it's because of how I approach, you know, content. Yeah. I mean, everything, how I approach content, how I approach execution, how yeah. I uh, approach pre-production, yeah. all of that, you know. Um, together with my business partner, yeah. those are the things that we instill in our, in, our, in our company. So when you come to our company, you know you're the best. Yeah. Because we've deemed you that. We want to collaborate with yeah. you. You know, you're not working for us. You are yeah. collaborating with us. 
Yeah, I think for me, um, one of the things that I have placed a very key emphasis over the last um, three, years, four, three, four, five years mm. is the power of having the right team yeah. and mm. cultivating and, and, and understanding as a producer mm. um, your relationship with your own authority and your own power. Mm. And I really, really believe working with creatives um, and creative teams that leading with empathy is what gives creatives yeah. the permission to show up as their higher self. Because yeah. to be honest, I'm glad you had that great experience yeah. in Cape Town and yeah. like, you know, with those, um, um, with that crew. But the reality is that sets in South Africa are a very frustrating place to be yeah. as crew. It's long hours. It's I've long, been on those. I've yeah, been it's on those long sets. hours. Um, and the fact that like, the budgets um, are very string. It, it creates a ripple effect into how things are done in Stress. the systems. Yeah, so it becomes very important as a creative lead to really cultivate how we are going to make this set a collaborative space, one, Conducive but a, as well a, as a space that can um, cultivate innovative creativity where people actually enjoy the creative process. Mm to match up, I guess, like the downsides of, of, of it all. But yeah. I think it is really up to the, the company heads, the creative producers, the series yeah. producers to really cult cultivate that culture that is going to be clear on the systems, on the frameworks, how are we doing this? So, like you just don't create the chaos, yeah. you know, especially in live TV environments where everything is just so charged up. You know, you want creatives to come as their best selves to leverage as well, go to how do I, take the masa with what they have to offer and amplify it to get yeah. what I want, but also to make it nice, to make the creative process enjoyable yeah. and nice. Yeah. yeah. Percy, I want to, I'm going to uh, add a sleight of hand here. For a long time, as somebody who, who looks, who introspects a little bit more deeply than others, there was a time in South Africa, and I hope that time is now ending, where Every single show used to start with two warring families. Someone dies, it's a wedding, uh, there's some sort of commotion. It was all Shakespearean uh, related uh, storylines and plot lines. Where do you think, in terms of how we tell our stories and how they were told in the past and what we were fed, right, which was the, the Shakespearean thematic, which to me personally as a viewer and also someone who's next to the industry, I get heavily annoyed when, when episode one of something starts and there's two warring families. Because for me, I'm a little bit more deeper than that. I understand that thing. So I want you to kind of give me a look into those producers' tables, those meetings, in terms of what stories are now being commissioned, considered yeah. uh, relative to the South African landscape. And like, when are we going to stop having two warring families yeah. at, or a wedding or someone dying or in episode bosses. one? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's television, you know, and I think it's the nature of soapies and telenovelas mm. and certain genres to, to have weddings, to mm. have warring families. But, but I think we, we have gotten into a space where there's, there's different kinds of storytellers and different kinds of stories within these, uh, with these, within these genres and subgenres. Uh, but also, um, you know, we, um, uh, producers are not a law unto themselves. Yeah. You know, we, we pitch these stories, and, yeah. and like Teddy said, it's a collaboration between ourselves and, mm. the, and the broadcasters. And if, for example, something worked for one broadcaster, mm. the other broadcaster might My want to have a thing. competing product. Um, uh, product. Yeah. Mm. So, so I think the great thing about now is that we're getting a variety of different shows um, and, and different themes within that space. So, so there was a time, you yeah. know, and I think I think I think it was within a period where. Um, um, there was an influx of telenovelas, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but but that time has changed. You know, we're yeah. moving into a new space now, where also telenovelas are shorter. Yeah. I think the, um, the the time where we had five, six seasons is gone. Yeah. It's not coming back because budgets have also changed. Yeah. So so while you might not like it, there are people who mm. certainly don't mind it and who who love consuming and that's such content. Beauty. That's the beauty of. You said that, that's why I said to you, it comes with its pros and its cons. That's the yeah. beauty of, 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 of these, you know, emerging, you know, um, Platform. uh, platforms yeah. coming, coming in. 
um, is that you know now we're telling stories very differently. Yeah. You yeah. know, and um, it's okay. And it's okay to mm. tell stories yes. very differently now. You know, um, f you know when you think about a show like you know Blood and Water, that is not necessarily a show that would have on the mainstream linear yes. television yes. been yes. something that appointment viewing, yeah. you know, would have called upon, but because it was on the streaming platform, it was a story that South Africans dared to tell that was different than two feuding, you know, families. Two, two feuding you know families, what I mean? yeah. yeah. It was different, it, was, it felt like the American, you know, teen, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, angst drama yeah. that you can, mm -hmm. and, and everybody tuned in and watched it because they could watch it when they wanted to watch it and how they wanted to watch it and consume those minutes yeah. um, as they wanted to and how they wanted to. Yeah. Um, and, and, and appointment viewing, Kind of you know limits us yeah. to yeah. to exploration. Totally, yeah. you know, totally. Um, as as a as a viewing palette, yeah. um, we've got a very intelligent uh, 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 audience in, in 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 South Africa. Yeah, maybe one of the most intelligent. Yeah, um, you know, we are we are very with it. We yeah. understand ourselves. We know what you can be from Harangua, Shoshanguve, like. Um, uh. <laughs> Bethlehem <laughs> in 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 <laughs> in <Freistad. laughs> um, but you know um, we've got a very 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 street smart street With it. wise yeah. you know uh, intellectual educated um, non educated but street uh, yeah. uh, you know they get it yeah. 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 you know they get it they understand life because they live the experience yeah. Yeah. so boldly and because we've got that little bit of freedom mm -hmm. in our yeah. country to really really understand and tap into it. Um, now are able to go and say, yo, I'm going to pay 199 Rand um, outside of just linear television yeah. and I'm going to watch and I'm going to consume documentary and, yeah. you know, all of those kinds of things. Uh, more documentaries are being watched these days, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and documentaries Historical are something that we really are so scared to, you know, place on Commission. linear yeah. television, yeah. you know? Um, but people are ex like really like, they have an appetite for it, but it's at their, at their convenience, at the time mm -hmm. where they want to. Yeah, and I see it in my, yeah. in my space as well, where, you know, like there was a time where talk and sort of like uh, um, talk game shows mm. um, and all those sort of like big general entertainment formats that were popular back then, mm. it sort of like died down when the reality sort of like wavelength mm. came yes. with Moja Love yeah. and other broadcasters sort of like trying to catch up with what it was happening in the space. Mm. Um, and now I see that we producers um, within this genre, we are going back to a, a, a situation where we are allowing ourselves to be more open with how we reimagine yes. these formats, um, how we interact with like talk show formats. Yeah. Yes, it's not gonna look like how it did with Fresh Yama Musa, but like yeah. how do we tap into our creativity and reimagine yeah. these formats, but also like do hybrids. Yeah. One of the, of the formats that I'm really enjoying at the moment is um, the social experiments where like we just use, cause people are really big on human connections. People yeah. want to know just what so other talking. people are thinking, yeah. doing, um, feeling. Yeah. And like, I like these hybrid formats where it's social experiments that ask a question um, that humanity and yeah. everyone wants to know and it's packaged nicely and it's a bit and it offers a new fresh take. Mm. And I think it's an exciting time for producers to really Absolutely. like yeah. open our horizon and yeah. really imagine. And redefine. Yes, yeah. and imagine redefine those formats. Yeah. Hey, like it's a very interesting space. I want to talk about the, <laughs> the inevitable, which is, is there a skew towards, is there an, an excessive skew towards Nguni-based shows in South Africa? Is, and, and if it's yes, is that a good or a bad thing? Yeah. Or is it a case of saying we should start to blend shows much more broadly so that we can actually get the bigger audiences? I don't know. That's yeah. a question. Yeah. I mean, there's more Nguni people in this country sure. than, than any other um, um, tribe. Mm. So, so I think broadcasters would naturally be interested in the majority. Yeah. But there are shows, like The River, for example. The River had a very big viewership in KZN. And we didn't have a lot of Sizulu on yeah. the show. We had Istwana and Sutu. We, we had many other languages. But I think because there is a large number of, of Ngunis. Um, they tend to watch more. And, and I, I think it's many different shows just yeah. across the country. Um, but um, 
a broadcaster like SABC would be more specific in saying yeah. this is a show for the Ngunis, yeah. this is a show for the so to speaking people and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Because their mandate is different. Yeah. The mandate is very different. Mm. But other other broadcasters and streamers certainly they they never really care mm. what you do, what languages are there. Because um, they, they, as the they entertain is there. more than yeah. So else. Yeah. So I think it really depends. So so uh, Teddy, I wanna I wanna go into <clears throat> sort of for new newer filmmakers. There was a there was a huge filmmakers yes, but also artists. There was a campaign. Uh, ran not so long ago, which was open up the industry. Did the industry actually open up after that? <laughs> Relative to the outcry, and now that people are starting to understand the dynamics of behind the scenes, I want us to then kind of paint a picture to them how they actually, how, you act, how your show that you watch and love actually ends up in front of you, and also people being on multiple shows, after that campaign of open up the industry, and there were certain people who were targeted during that time, right? Uh, like Bosomizi, et cetera, and all those, all those uh, people. Did the industry actually open up? And if, if it's a yes, um, or whether it's a no, following that, how do we then start to create more spaces for more people to get into uh, and to showcase their talents and abilities? Uh, you know, I think change takes time, mm. right? Um, and, you know, when, when that entire hype and angst was around about, you know, around, you know, um, audiences being angry and, and new artists being angry around, you know, there not being opportunities for them, I think it was just at the time, it, I, I think it made complete sense because we were so stuck in these are the people and regurgitating and re rotating and all of that because we wanted to be certain it was going to land whatever we were doing you know at, at the end of the day i think that's what where the the producing headspace was at but i think the call for it um i think in s to a certain degree was answered yeah but i think like i said change takes time yeah you know we're seeing more you know, faces coming into the mm. space. Um, you know, I, I see it on House of Sweden and how, you know, all these new faces just, we launched the show with a majority cast of new faces, mm. right? Um, and it proved to be successful. Um, and you, I think it's, it's different for each, you know, show, each platform, but I've really seen the change kind of, you know, coming about. Mm. Um, but there's something in legacy that is so important in our industry mm. because that's how, you know, the Hollywood Walk of Fame exists. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is yeah. that we can hold these people to a standard and, you know, and to a helm. And, and that's, that's the beauty of, of, of stardom, is yeah. that you've got the star that you can depend on, that you yeah. know is huge we'll and deliver. big and whatever, mm -hmm. but also making sure that there's a quota. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that is, uh, that is the mm -hmm. responsibility. We fight for that. Mm -hmm. that, is, yeah. that is the producers and even the broadcasters yeah. fight for that. Yeah. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I say to you, I can say to you with certainty that it is a yes, but yeah. I can tell you that it takes time. Yeah. And we're not there completely. Yeah. yeah. But we're walking we're the journey. Walking the yeah. journey. I was kind of impressed with SABC3 because when I brought the last season of Training SA, I fought for Coconut Kells to be in that yeah. Training SA table because. It was at a time where, um, yes, she wasn't doing TV, but her commentary online and the community that she had created, but also you knew exactly what you would expect from her. Yes. And, uh, uh, and if you don't take that risk when you know that... Um, There's raw talent in front of you. You know what I mean? And I had to like justify and write many presentations and write an archetype and like engage with the SABC3 execs and really fight for it because I believe in it. And, uh, and they came to the party, you yeah. know what I mean? So I'm agreeing with you to yeah. say that like, even though the change is gradual, also as producers, sometimes I feel like we downplay our contribution mm. and our, um, I guess our status, because sometimes we are the ones who are shy with engaging our clients yeah. about things. And you find out that like, once you, once you open that conversation, yeah. people do listen, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? They yeah. do listen. Yeah, There's got to be a balance. I yes. mean, you, you're not going to launch a new show with an all new cast. cast. You, you can't, yeah. you know, you, you need you some heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. You, you need some heavyweights. Also, like, you, you can't move the day, because no. the day has to move as quickly There's as possible. There's that as well. There's, there's a yeah. practical side of the actual production, but. Yeah the marketability of a show is dependent on who you have, you know, who your leads are. So, so while it's great and it's necessary to yeah. have new talent, you've got to have the experienced people who, yeah. have, um, who have garnered um, um, 
enough enough knowledge yeah. ability yeah. And experience following, yeah. following yeah. Um, to to do and, multi cam shoots that are faster and their faster. advertisers will trust as well when they yeah. know that if this person is on the show then we know that it's 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 a legit production or yeah. and so on and so on so so a lot is happening broadcasters are being intentional and yeah. producers are also being intentional of course there's more that we yeah. can do there's always more that we can do. now as leaders and I say this proudly, as leaders on the continent, when it comes to high quality productions, yeah. why are we not seeing South Africans export these talents into Africa and share what we know and bring back maybe different stories, new stories, or take our stories there? Why are we not seeing more of that? Because I think, personally, mm. we are still finding ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. We are we are still finding. It's like I said to you, like we we're, we're still mm. on the back yeah. foot of everything. Yeah. Yeah. We're catching up. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so if we're catching up, yeah. Imagine other you know, countries. The, yeah, yeah. The other and the countries. landscape is changing you, you know um, I mean? at a very rapid yeah. um, pace. You know, like how you do content, how you do business, um, the new emerging trends, yeah. the technology, the digital trends that yeah. are emerging, the formats within formats. Yeah. Yeah, we can only just like really catch up, yeah. I think. We, yeah. we really are in catch up mode and, and, and I think, you know, it, we, we, we're trying to do the work at home. Yeah. As, as, is, as is everybody, yeah. you know. Um, we're trying to build our stars here. Mm. For the longest time, we didn't have stars. You know, we had people who were on TV that were famous, yeah. Yeah. you know. And, You're and, trying and to move your business from a small <laughs> business yeah. to, to, to being yeah. something yeah. worthwhile. Uh, you know what exactly, I mean? Exactly, exactly. Mm. You've got... You've got you know, um, new producers in their infancy years who are helmed as big producers. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we set us out. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm it saying? Becomes a problem. You know, so we still need the support. We still yeah. need. I mean, if our biggest problem is that you know, from a four million rand budget, you're only making Rennet. said amount. That's a problem, right? Yeah. Um, we're poor. We're hungry. We're starving. And because what it means, sorry, yeah. Teddy, what it means yeah. is that as a producer. You didn't leave if you don't have a show, <laughs> yeah. you're not making money. Yeah. Yeah. You only make money during that time when you have a show. So, so, so it's, almost like, no profit. It's, it's almost like an actor, right? So Pretty you guys much. are almost the same. Yeah. If there's no production that we're currently working on, not even the one that you're seeing on television, because I, I might have banked that content yeah. and it's playing, yeah. but I'm not, no longer getting paid. Yeah. So you're in the similar boat. We are all yeah. a paycheck away from being kicked out of our house. Exactly. Yeah, all of I want to bring something with Teddy, because I want to see if it's the same experience um, as me. There is a new thing now when we are pitching for new work. The mm. pitch decks that we are doing are becoming increasingly expensive. But not, not just like the pitch decks. Oh, girl. <laughs> it Just costs so much money yeah. to develop yeah. Yeah. new concepts and totally. like out of that 300,000 that you are making from your producer's fee, yeah. you still have to bring it back to the business because consultants had to yeah. be paid, yeah. you, you so much developers yes. Guys. Yeah. Um, shooting the sizzlers, packaging the new work. Yeah. That what, you might not what even your get. your production fee is in South Africa, how it works, you know, and, and, and you know, in South Africa, how it works is that there's no development. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand what there's I'm no saying? There's, there's, yeah. there's, there's no. no budget for development. Yeah. You come, it's pre-production. So you yeah. come with your deck, you pitch, ooh, blah, 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 and you go. And what you would normally be paying for development, right, is your production fee. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. So, so basically, in a way, the broadcasters are not paying for the, for the pre-development of shows. They're not actually paying not for the, the pitching. We're not there yet. Why, why are we not there yet? Not I, have there to, yet. I, have to, I have to give them, uh, you know, uh, a little bit of credit. You know, credit because, yeah. because they are moving in that direction. Yeah. I'm not going to say which they, yeah. they yeah, know it's themselves. Not yeah. 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 But, it's but, not but, but because of the, the, the emergence of these new, yeah. uh, you know, online Plates. platforms, um, who do have the development in their the stage in their business model? Yeah. Um, we are now waking up to yeah. to the idea of development, yeah. but development is also a fight yeah. Yeah. because in your development, especially when it comes to 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 uh, you know uh, original formats. Yeah. When you do development, you sign that you sign that over. Yeah. So 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 the contracts are tricky. It's, yeah. Everything is just against you. Yeah. You know, and just pro. 
you know, the but streaming it's what you said, that we are catching up. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, and, catching and, and, and that's the fear of it. Like, yeah. So if I don't do it, so if I don't do development with this, I'm not going to have development here. And you're not going to because the show. I have to do development yeah. here. It means that I have the opportunity to yeah. possibly do the show yeah. because development doesn't mean you're going to get the show, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so now. You, there's just so many things that you're just like so scared and yeah. fearful for. You know, like if I if I do the development and I'm only getting a hundred thousand rand for development, which a hundred thousand that I'm not pocketing because I've got, I've got to bring a creative, I've got to bring a director, I've got to, you know, I've got to bring uh, researchers into this, experts on a certain topic to pay this five thousand, blah blah blah. Before you know, the whole hundred thousand is gone. But you've signed over your rights yes. to, especially younger producers who yeah. don't understand what that means. They're yeah. just happy and lucky to have, to have the opportunity, mm -hmm. you know. I just wish we can have the conversation, you know, with our, our broadcast uh, casting partners. Yeah. That just seems fair and reasonable. There's something that, that, that has always interested me, interested me, and, and, and taking maybe from a little bit about the, the Nguni conversation and how South African, the South African television industry segments itself geographically, um, I've always felt that there was a that there was a barrier that certain shows are made in Joburg, certain shows are made in Cape Town. Then Durban came about, and KwaZulu Natal basically broke the duopoly in my eyes. And you guys will kind of give me a better sense of how it was working at, at from a producer's perspective was who's working in the industry. I felt that you started to find new shows coming from. Um, the KwaZulu Natal region that was centered around what they wanted to be seeing or felt they were not seeing as producers, etc. Now, that then gave the South African, the, the geographical spread of the South African TV industry, three key regions, which I'm not saying is enough, but it's what we were dealing with now. You got Joburg, which was sort of like the core. It's easy to work with people, uh, easier to work with people here because they're close proximity. You can make multiple shows. There's enough editors, post-production, etc. And then you found that Cape Town was apparently making, or so, and not apparently, they were actually making more internationally focused shows because you found that there were international movies like Safe House were made there. You had uh, Cape Town Film Studios was making the new uh, or reimagined um, Troy. It was done there. So you found that their focus was more international. Durban came with a more KZN, Nguni type of flow. But I want to know if, is, is, is how I'm seeing it correct? Uh, and also, how can other regions create something similar and kind of break into this to tell new stories from different regions? Um, I think I'll start with you, Percy. How, how are you seeing it? I think it's the infrastructure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, Chesa Pictures recently did a show in Kebeha. Yeah. Kebeha, yeah. Right? And there are many challenges there because you don't have an established industry yeah. there. You don't have a DOP who's living in Kebeha. Mm -hmm. You don't have um, um, a media company that's yeah. in Kebeha. Well, you can, yeah, you don't mm -hmm. have all of it. So you have to take people from Joburg mm -hmm. and go to Kebeha and hope that there are students yeah. who are in the film space there, mm -hmm. that you can impart certain skills to. Sure. Um, and, then, and then we recently did um, Outlaws which is now on Show Max, mm. um, episode two. Is congrats, on. congrats, congrats, yeah. congrats. Um, where we were shooting, we had to build roads because certain places wow. were not conducive for certain transport to, to drive there because it's on the outskirts. Yeah. So, so, and I think that's the simple response that in certain places, the infrastructure doesn't allow for, for the film space. To, doesn't to that build. lend itself to then telling very... I'd say in the broader sense, very narrow stories around South Africa, because I, I, it does make sense, but at the same time, it's, it, it, it then, from somebody who's on the outside, who's not sitting uh, on the producer's table, yeah. it, I look at it and I say, a show like at Kabeha is an important show, because yeah. there, there are enough people to kind of view it, but you're saying, it's, it's hard to make. We would love to, but it needs a bigger participation from the government, from yeah. those municipalities. I mean, for example, Kerecha is um, it's a partnership between multi-choice and the municipality of Kerecha, yeah. who have paid a lot of money, millions, mm. to make sure that the show 
takes place. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's really, I think it's, it's also about the, the demand, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, of that particular, you know, region yeah. or territory, because, um, you know, you can't go and, you know, make a show in a, 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 a certain region and think you can make 10 shows there. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I you understand. don't have, number one, the infrastructure, I understand. number two, the demand. Yeah. Do you understand and what I'm saying? Sets. And the skill sets. And these, like Durban, is a developing yeah. One, right? Yeah. Because, because we know crew that it, comes from we know, we know yeah, that it's a, we know that's a hub. It still needs mm -hmm. the support, support from mm -hmm. but, but it's that easier is to support. A, yeah. It's a strain on the demand, right? Because the flights, now you have to think, so it ups yeah. the budget then it does accommodation. 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 accommodation and whatever and people have to shift and move yeah. their lives and, and then they move back. Yeah. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Because when that's gone, the demand is not enough for them to mm. stay there. So a lot yeah. of people who go to Uzalo come back. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Or whatever the case might be. So it really is about the demand. And once, once the space demands it and the infrastructure has been focused for it, and it's like Atlanta, it. right? Yeah. Atlanta has become this new hub because the demand is that there are mm -hmm. many black, talented yeah. Um, yeah. artists who aren't, can't all move to New York and to and yeah. Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. So now yeah. we're building yeah. these studios that allow for these kinds of, for a variety of yeah. stories to be told. Yeah because the infrastructure of Atlanta allows, allows for yeah. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So you're not going to have a studio in uh, Detroit, yeah. Colorado. You're, you're not, not going to yeah. have a studio yeah. in... Do you understand what I'm saying? So you're either going to Los Angeles, going to New York, and yeah. it's not to say that there aren't studios, smaller studios in those spaces. Yeah. And maybe that's the conversation. Maybe mm -hmm. it is about starting little, yeah. you know... Um, micro studios. Mm -hmm. Micro yeah. studios that yeah. are happening in these different... Mm -hmm. But it really is about the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is you know, uh, a conducive space, to have a space where you go that to that represents yeah. the dream, mm -hmm. that yeah. represents mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? Because otherwise we're scattered. It's like the same thing when we talk about, yeah. um, sorry, yeah. it's, it's about the same thing when we talk about, you know, we're regurgitating the same people. Yeah. Yes, we have to, because yeah. this is how we make stars. Teddy, you're, yeah. you're touching on something, and I want to throw it back to you again quickly. You, is, the, is the industry doing enough to facilitate a throughput of younger people into the industry. For instance, not like now, as you're saying, I'm thinking, like for instance, Emonti, are there enough editors, Emonti? Let me just, just as a simple thing, mm -hmm. right? Because still, we might think that we can do work remotely, but in the creative industry, you can't. Files are 10 to 20 to 30 gigs that you've got to move across um, networks that are doing three megabits per second. Yeah. Mm. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. It'll take you like three weeks to say, you, it's cheaper to just fly there, drop a disc off and then come yeah. back. So now you've got to start democratizing skills. Yeah. And, 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 and this is my question, right? So there's, there, there are things that I want to do, which is to teach people how to edit. To, I can teach a person more, maybe in one week how to edit. Now imagine if you're teaching 10, 20, 30 people. You start to get, then say to yourself, even if for the next two, three years, this person is editing stuff for TikToks and whatnot, they have an understanding of the programs, they get to understand how to do transitions, et cetera, et cetera. You can then teach them how to edit for a particular format because it's obviously different. But is the industry doing enough to assist maybe the schools that are bringing people in to say, maybe you should start doing satellite, satellite offices in different provinces, in Mangawung, in, uh, in Rusty, in uh, Pulukwane, etc., so that uh, we can start to have a, a, not an overflow per se, but also more skilled people with this. Because you can actually say to people, uh, edit this particular thing for me and make it simpler for different formats, and they're somewhere else. But as you said, you fly to, you fly to a Kabeha, you now you must bring an editor. Mm -hmm. And you must house them, because now you've got to deliver episodes every, every week maybe to channel. Yeah. So is the industry doing enough? Do you think it's doing enough to upskill the younger people coming in and also looking at different places? And is that, is, is, should that be on in the industry? It can always do more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, see, I see the initiatives, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, from the NFDF and, you know, the multi -choice and, you know, and the multi-choice talent factory. I see those emails coming through. I see the, you know, the PR and the marketing, yeah. um, you know, even then, it's not enough, right? Mm -hmm. Even then, it's not enough because we need to be getting into the townships. We, should, we need to be getting into the rural areas to make people aware of the possibilities of what the, what the entertainment industry is, yeah. you know? Um, so the, the, the answer is simply is not yeah. is no, yeah. but 
it's not without effort. Yeah. Um, and so we've got to acknowledge that the effort is there. It's just about you know finding you know strategic yeah. you know ways and strategic partners to make it make sense information yeah. out there. So I, I mean I see on a weekly basis I see emails about you know new, new initiatives for young uh, upcoming you yeah. know practitioners yeah. and that kind of thing because I mean a part of the community whether that is happening outside of the community mm -hmm. is that's a that it's very scarce I, I don't the, see that the other truth is, in, is that even like the entry when you leave yeah. after after your last year to get into the industry and start crafting your path into the industry is a lot yeah. and i mean you think about the, the 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 graduates but you also think about like young like the young producers like us who still want to get the commissions yeah. to get inside those yeah. boardrooms to get the business yeah. the first show yeah it is a problem yeah. you know like i cannot say to the sapc i have not been able i cannot say i, cannot say, I have not been able to, to go at the and say sapc three for an example yeah. i've produced all your flagship shows for the last 10 years give me a development sort of like deal, Project, like Issa yeah. Rae, yeah. who got like a five million, uh, a 500 million deal to yeah. produce for these studios for the next five years. Yeah. Like why, why, can't, why, why can't I get those kind of deals, exclusive yeah. deal from SAPC to say that we trust you and yeah. your track record, you've We've done these TV you. shows for us, flagship yeah. shows, prime time, yeah. Yeah. big shows. Yeah. Let's give you an exclusive deal, good luck for the next three years. Sive, you, you give us yeah. incubation, yeah. development for like uh, small businesses, and we will make sure that there's a pipeline of budget that always goes to you, so that you're always creating for us. And one of these shows is going to hit, and we can literally. And then you pay forward. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I want to actually, you've brought the business back into it, and I want to talk about as you, you you spoke about even presentation decks and the development process being really expensive. I I want to touch onto that. Advertiser funded projects yeah. are now very much a buzzword. Yeah. Obviously, even post-COVID, there's yeah. just not enough money to go yeah. around to produce yeah. um, uh, shows or the types of shows or shows to the quality that the, the, the creatives and the producers have kind of envisaged for the show to be. The corporatization of the South African TV industry is something that seems to be touch and go because, one, you're always looking for that job, that, that job that uh, will kind of keep you paid. But at the same time, you've got to be pitching actively pitching and that's costing money. But corporates on the other side, ex there's a certain level of expectation in terms of what they should get as corporates in order for them to outlay money and give you money for these projects, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're sitting in between as the producer. You've got to then create this deck and go sell it. On corporate side, they want a particular type of field setting and want to see how does it benefit me? Mm -hmm. You also got to balance that with Broadcaster expectation. Mm -hmm. Now I want to know how is it or what do producers have to now do, right, relative to where the industry is going in order for them to speak the right language to funders mm -hmm. but also to create better television, mm -hmm. better programming across all platforms mm -hmm. but still make money. Yeah. I mean, yes, you're right. Bread content is something that we've been actively getting in involved with, uh, actually in, in GE because... Again, the yeah. commissions, the license, the business model is just all over the place. Broadcasters don't have money, yeah. you know. Um, and one of the things with my development partners that we do, you know this because yeah. we use you and yeah. your company. We have had to um, be innovative and be ahead of the digital trends. And not only digital trends, but like marketing, digital yeah. marketing trends, yeah. content marketing trends as mm. well. So that like we can just build this ecosystem where we are able to speak to our brand partners. Yeah. But in a way that is not too advertorial, yeah. it meets the editorial and the creative output yeah. in, in the middle. And sometimes, I remember the last um, training essay we, we had, Vodacom, yeah. um, one of the things that we had to do is to find a way to adjust our practices, our industry practices, because obviously the corporate have got their practices, we've yes. got our own operational practices, but also our own business practices. Yeah. And I realized that a lot of that engagement, I had to sort of like, uh, teach my clients yeah. about our practices and try to adjust to their practices as well to yeah. merge it. But I think it is a long way to go. But at the same time, I don't think there are enough um, producers as well who are getting in that direction of um, branded content and only because in creative rooms now, yeah. you'll get a content producer, you get yeah. a sales content producer because together oh. the other one is responsible for, it, for the creative output. Yeah. And then the other one is responsible for taking this to sell it to brands. Yeah. But also like how um, we have to train ourselves and upscale. Yeah. Your salespeople. Yes. 
I mean, for example, last year I did a digital um, marketing course because I need to be able to speak the same language. I need to be able, as I am, concept developing and formatting mm. and output because you already know, yeah. with, with, even with the ones that we've been pitching this year, yeah. where within the pitch they already want to know what's your plan of monetization, yeah. what's your plan of leveraging. How are you going to take it to digital? Yeah, or what is your digital inter integration? Yeah. And you can't just say, I'm a, I'm a producer, I, I, I can't know. Otherwise, how Yo, are you going to make money? You yeah. have to, in your creative rooms now, also like be... Um, very open-minded yeah. about the kind of skill you have in your creative room it's, or, or in your production team. Yeah. It's not just creative producers, content producers, digital yeah. producers. We have to have people who are um, content marketers, people yeah. who are social yeah. um, community managers, yeah. uh, people who are going to go sell. Pro product integrators. How, yes, do, how, do, you yes, place, yes, how yes. do you place this brand without it killing a storyline, yeah. right? Yeah. They can't just stop and be like, Bank A is yes, amazing. Yes, you yes, should yes. definitely get one of their cards. And then when you know, you've yeah. got to find a way to integrate really properly. And how are you, how are you finding, uh, Percy, how are you finding that integration? Because it's something that, that started a long time ago in telenovelas in South Africa. I think the first time I noticed it, it was either Gentle Magic uh, and, and Capitec in terms of integrating the corporate yeah, into the storylines, yeah. Even way before that, I think with Generations and, and uh, was it Telcom or MTN? Way back, yeah. way back. So, so I think there's got to be a balance. So, so we've done um, a, a couple of story integrations. I mean, there's product placement, there's yeah. sponsorship, there's story integration um, with, with Jamison, Samsung. You did a great um, job with Jamison. Yeah. Yeah. Jamison thank you. Did a thank you. Fantastic. I mean, thank you really very much. Page. We have a relationship yeah. with the sales department yeah. at, at, uh, at DSTV and a relationship with, with the brand yeah. because they need to be very clear in terms of what they want to achieve. But yeah. also we've got a job of telling stories. Yeah. We've got very intelligent viewers, like Teddy said, and you yeah. don't want to turn them off yeah. with overt... In your, in your yeah. face. Yeah. 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 So, so it's, it's got to be done in a very intelligent way without really losing your mandate. You've got to make, you gotta make yeah. it sexy. Um, I, I just want to say, as, as we kind of like wind down the conversation, I've, I've really appreciated your, your time, your expertise, because I don't think you understand that by, by sharing your time, sharing your expertise, you, you have represented almost an entire group of, grouping of people who are always vilified for their actions. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. If things go right, it's the directors and the actors. If things go wrong, it's the producers. They didn't do their work. So I want to thank you for, for sharing. So for sharing so freely, right? Um, between you, there are 40-something years of experience within the industry, and you don't buy that off a supermarket shelf. You can only get that type of experience from sitting with people like you who are at the coalface, who are doing the work. So I just want to... I want to thank you for your contribution today to this conversation. And I want you to keep going out there and doing and creating, no matter the obstacles that are in front of you. It's important that we tell our stories in our own way. And w that cliche is a cliche because it's important and must be done. And you guys are doing it. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for the work that you do for us to help us create a world that is easier to live in, where, where we, where life imitates art and art imitates life. And you guys bringing all of that together and bringing all these different minds, these people together to create something magical and special that wins awards, that moves people, that, that touches hearts, that gives people hope, right? That creates action within people that they must get up. You guys do that. And no one must ever actually tell you differently. You do that, you put it together. It's not, about, it's not about the people at the top, nor the people who are actually in front of the camera. You are in between. You make it happen. Without you, it doesn't happen. Very well Thank you. Very well said. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, um, for, for creating. Let's keep creating. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you for having us. <laughs> Pleasure. I never see